Basic biology and how to make a baby has been taught in science classes for decades, but a landmark experiment at the University of Bath has opened up the possibility that babies could one day be conceived without a mother and using skin cells. The hope is that the research could dramatically change human fertility treatment in the future. This is Dr. Lisa Weber. Uh, Dr. Weber is from the Centre for Reproductive and Genetic Health. Dr. Weber, could you talk us through this experiment because this is such a major advance in science and, and quite extraordinary. Yes, well what this research has, has done is it's really giving us an insight into actually how cells are controlled. Um, an embryonic cell has the potential to become any type of cell in the body and what this research has done is actually taken an egg that has been artificially activated to make it divide so it's behaving as if it had been fertilized but it hasn't. What the researchers then did was inject a sperm into this activated egg which is called a parthen parthenogenote and it's then gone on and divided and has formed um, a normal embryo which has gone on to produce offspring. Now, a couple of key things here is that this has still used an egg mm -hmm. and this is research that's been done in mice. Mm -hmm. And mice are often used as examples of, uh, of a mammal because they are mammals, but we are a very, very long way away from this being something that could be done in humans. When I opened up the paper this morning and I saw the story and it was talking about motherless babies, I mean, these would still need to be in vitro into a woman, presumably. They would still have to have a pregnancy and deliver that child. And it would presumably Correct. be giving hope to women who don't have their own eggs, would have to use an egg donor so they can have a genetic link to their child, potentially. We're a long way off. Potentially, but that is a very, that's a, you know, very many steps down the line because the key thing about this research as it is at the moment is that it has used an egg. But the exciting thing is that it's used um, a cell that is not at the traditional stage. We used to believe that only eggs um, were capable of activating sperm. Yeah. And what this has shown is that actually cells at another stage in the cell cycle yeah. are capable of activating it's, sperm. It's a completely different way of creating life. And there's bound to be ethical questions, I suppose, around that. Of course there are. but. We're actually quite good in this country at addressing these ethical questions. Um, I mean, I'm sure you will remember all the debate that there was when IVF first came into clinical practice, and this country addressed it through the Warnock mm. Committee, and we have the Human Fertilisation and Embryology Act as a result. So we are quite good at addressing these, uh, these ethical issues as a society, because it is society that would be the, 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 the remit for addressing yeah. these. Now, Dr Weber, another exciting uh, offshoot of this is this has also been heralded as a major step forward in cancer treatment. Could you talk us through why that would be? Cancer cells change their destiny. That's what makes them a cancer cell. And what this research has done has changed the destiny of both what's called the embryonic stem cell and the sperm. So it's teaching us something about what controls cells. So if we can understand that more, then it may be that we can understand more of the processes that are involved mm. when a cancer cell is formed. And if you understand how it's formed, you may be able to actually interrupt it. Fascinating stuff. Mm, Thanks for explaining really that to us. Appreciate Thank that. You. Dr. Lisa Weber is from the Centre for Reproductive and Genetic Health. Thank you.